to the first video in a project series where I show you what it took for me to put a V8 in this Jeep Wrangler. Uh, this started out life as a 2.5 liter four cylinder uh, Jeep with a five speed manual transmission. And uh, about a year ago, I put a 5.2 liter Dodge V8 out of the Durango along with a uh, four speed automatic with overdrive transmission. Um, the project is now completed, the swap is done. Uh, but I took a lot of video clips along the way and I'll be uh, stitching those together and uh, kind of making a project overview of how I got to the point that I'm at now. Um, so today I'm just going to show you around uh, what I did, where the Jeep sits now. It's still a little bit of work in progress. Uh, we got a little more to do, but um, it's been on the road for about a year. I haven't had any problems with it uh, due to um, swap related issues. Uh, things that I have had somewhat of an issue with are uh, really due to the fact that it's an old engine. Um, this engine uh, is 18 years old at this point. Um, I bought it from the original owner, so he had a pretty good idea of what's been done to it, which was absolutely nothing besides maintenance. It did have 104,000 miles. Um, it was 106, something like that. So it was pretty low mileage, but uh, the story I got was that it was his wife's vehicle. She drove it from their house uh, to work every day, and she worked two or three miles down the road. Now, uh, we all know short trips are not so good for um, engines or transmissions, especially if it wasn't properly warmed up. So, um, you know, we'll see what the life is of this. Um, I wouldn't mind eventually uh, building a 5.9 liter and uh, swapping that in its place, since it'll be a direct bolt-in, because the 5.2 and 5.9 uh, share pretty much the same block. Um, they have all the same mounting points, all the accessories are the same. It's really just a displacement that's different. Uh, so if you want to do a 5.2 or a 5.9, it's really going to be the same uh, process as I did. Uh, 5.9, um, you know, you're, you're going to get a little more power out of it. Um, from what I understand, it doesn't rev as quickly as a 5.2. Uh, which is kind of what I liked. Um, I also liked the fact that I was, thought I was going to get a little better gas mileage with the uh, 5.2 than 5.9. Um, gas mileage is about the same as I was getting with the four cylinder. Um, right now, with 31 inch tires, uh, 3.73 gears, uh, the automatic transmission, the 5.2, I'm getting about 15 miles a gallon. Um, if I drop down to 355s, I'm sure that could be uh, in, uh, increased uh, if I put. 355 years in the axles, but uh, I'm fine with it as it is. There she is. It's the uh, 5.2 liter V8. And I'm going to make this video pretty quick because it's uh, 7 degrees out today. Uh, that's Fahrenheit. And uh, that's the high of the day, and I really don't feel like being out here too long. So, anyway, uh, my goal was to make this look as factory as possible. Um, you see, I don't have the heater core hooked up yet. Like I said, it's a work in progress, and uh, I'm not driving it this time of year with all the snow. Um, but I guess we'll uh, we'll start from this side of the engine bay and work to the other. Uh, I used the computer out of the V8. Um, this plug on the computer is the body harness. I didn't touch that. That's just the unmodified uh, TJ plug plugged into the computer. And then these two right here run the engine, the transmission, the fuel pump. Uh, pretty much the whole drivetrain uh, ties into these these two connectors. And uh, these were what the custom harness that I needed to build uh, tied into. Um, so on the subject of the harness, so I bought a spare TJ harness off of eBay, and I bought a spare Durango harness off of eBay, and uh, used those two to make one. Uh, this is primarily based off of the TJ harness um, with a few connectors from the Dodge harness uh, blended in to the TJ harness. Um, so most of the, the uh, Dodge harness went unused. Uh, let's see, obviously we're on the stock um, TJ battery. Uh, the fuse box here. Um, I added a few circuits in here. Um, automatic transmission, relay. Uh, fuse for the automatic transmission. There might have been something else um, I added in there, but I'll cover that in a later video. Uh, stock TJ air box with the uh, Dodge V8 air hat and hose going to the fuel, uh, the air box, not the fuel box. Um, 
Let's see, we've got a V8 conversion radiator uh, aluminum that I bought off of eBay. I think it's American Eagle brand. Maybe it's something different. I think it's American Eagle though. And a uh, coolant uh, overflow tank that is also off of eBay. Uh, just a cylinder that I made up a bracket and mounted it to the radiator. We've got the uh, six cylinder um, 4.0 TJ fan shroud. Got a Ford Explorer uh, fan in there with the Dodge uh, fan clutch and uh, that ties into the water pump. Uh, the belt, I think, uh, so I took off the AC. I don't have AC anymore. I might put it back in someday. But um, the belt, I believe, is off of a 2007 Camry. Um, again, all this stuff I'll be covering later on, and uh, I'll probably do a final parts list uh, as one of the last videos. Um, so stay tuned. But this is just a quick overview um, showing what I've done and what you can expect to see. Uh, the exhaust, I did a fully custom exhaust. Um, these are block hugger headers from Summit Racing. And uh, from there back, um, from there back to the muffler, I made everything myself. Uh, I made the downpipe, the connector, uh, put the cat in line, and then connected up to a uh, Summit Racing um, muffler and tailpipe that are made for a 4.0 Wrangler. Uh, it's all two and a half inch exhaust. Uh, it's actually two and a quarter coming off of the headers, and then it goes into two and a half all the way back. Um, I think three inches optimal, but uh, I just happened to find that two and a half inch um, setup from Summit. Uh, like I said, we've got the automatic transmission. Um, I replaced all the plug wires, just general maintenance stuff. Um, then this is, we're using the uh, Dodge alternator. So the throttle cable just goes back into the firewall, is off of the Dodge, and I'm running the TJ uh, cruise control right here. Which, uh, runs back up the firewall and over to the vacuum solenoid over there. Like I said, I uh, I didn't put AC in here right now, but uh, I did leave the connectors in there and uh, put provisions for putting it in in the future. Um, what else? Uh, all factory internals on the engine, uh, factory valve covers, the steering pump. Um, I used a uh, V8 ZJ steering pump bracket, a TJ steering pump, and a ZJ uh, steering pump pulley. Um, and, uh, we've got kind of all the vacuum lines tied in here to the brake booster. Uh, we've got all the factory TJ emission stuff uh, in place. I don't have any check engine lights. All my gauges work perfectly. Um, everything about this... Uh, functions exactly uh, as it would have uh, if Jeep had offered this from the factory. Um, for the transmission cooler, I did not use the, uh, the radiator that I bought. Um, it does have provisions in it for cooling a transmission, but um, I've, had, I've heard mixed reviews about these radiators and I didn't feel like uh, risking mixing uh, antifreeze with tranny fluid. Uh, so I did a standalone cooler under the Jeep. Uh, I'm not going to show you that right now because I don't feel like laying on the snow. Uh, but again, it will be in a future video that will show that to you. And uh, that's kind of the bulk of it. I'm sure there's more that I'm forgetting about off the top of my head. But uh, like I said, you know, it's a work in progress. Um, I'm missing the trim ring bezels around the headlights right now. I haven't put those back in yet because I've got different headlights to put in. Uh, the suspension is currently under construction. Um, I'm in the process of swapping the front axle. You can see the track bar isn't even connected. It's hanging down there. Shocks are off of the Jeep, which is why you saw it rock so much uh, when I started it up. So this has been a very interesting project. This is the first time I've done a swap like this. Um, I've done plenty of work um, otherwise, but an actual uh, engine change, not just an engine swap. You know, I've done engine swaps before replacing an engine with the same type of engine. Uh, but never putting a different engine in the place of uh, an engine that used to be there. Uh, so it was a good learning experience. Um, I really enjoyed it, and the Jeep has been very fun to drive. Um, this is really the engine uh, that the Jeep should have come with uh, from the factory. It's it's, uh, it's a lot of fun to, to drive. There's plenty of power. It's not too much power because it is a late 90s V8, and, uh, and those don't hold a candle to uh, V8s produced today in the... Uh, what are we at? Two that we're, we're in the last day of 2017 right now, so 2018 probably when this video is uh, uh, comes out. So.
So anyway, like I said, it's uh, seven degrees out here today, so I don't want to stand uh, around for too long talking, but uh, this is just a project introduction. If it's something you're interested in following, uh, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Um, share the video with anyone you think might be interested in seeing this. And uh, if this was something you found uh, interesting, go ahead and hit the like button. And uh, leave any comments below. Um, too many technical questions I probably won't be answering at this point because, like I said, I will be producing the, uh, the whole video series. And more than likely, your questions will be answered uh, in the videos for the series. So, thanks for watching. Again, uh, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe.